The Move Shoot Move Tracker. Do you need one? Is it important to your photography? Will it help your photography? I'm answering all those questions and more in just a moment. Hi and welcome back to the videos. If you're not already subscribed, do me a big favor, hit the subscribe button. It's just down here somewhere. If you can't see that one, scroll under the video. You'll see it there. Give it a smack for me. So in this video, I'm talking about the Move, Shoot, Move Star Tracker. Now, it is a little bit of a limited video because the nights haven't been that clear, unfortunately. So let's start at the beginning. I initially thought this unit was gonna come from America, so I ordered it and it actually came from China. Took about a fortnight to arrive. Everything's happy, all good. So when it arrived, really well packaged, no problem with the unit at all. Really, really good condition. Um, I proceeded then obviously to unpack it, like a boy at Christmas. Charged up the unit with the given cables. What I did notice though, the instruction manual wasn't really that clear. So it is worth knowing that you will need an extra ball head. So in my instance, the move shoot move is attached to my tripod and its ball head. Then I'll attach the ball head that I bought to the actual move shoot move. And then the camera then will be connected to that ball head. And then I'll be able to move the camera independently. The biggest problem I found was waiting for a clear sky. That was the biggest issue I had when I had this unit. The weather was clear for a couple of days beforehand. We had cracking weather here in South Wales. Absolutely cracking weather. But as soon as that unit arrived, it just took a dive. And then it picked up a bit and I had one good evening. And then the next evening then I, I just had a few hours. So I'm unable to take this out to test against any Milky Way goodness and lusciousness and all the rest of it. I had done my own research on this unit. And the initial setup, I, I, I found it really easy. I put this together in the back garden in about 30 seconds. So there is a Facebook group and any questions for what I could see were answered very, very quickly within that group. It seemed like a really, really good group. So just a word of warning with the laser, it is very powerful. Please be aware of any aircraft that may be around you. It could be very dangerous for the pilot. It goes without saying, but I feel like I just need to say it. And just a little bit of advice, just to make sure you've got a well-leveled tripod before you mount the tracker. So initially I put the unit on to my tripod. I then used the laser pointer then to point to the North Star. Once I found the North Star, I attached the camera. And once I've attached the camera, I put the laser pointer on again. And the reason why I put the laser pointer on again is just to make sure that the camera hasn't slipped moved, slid, it, it, it hasn't adjusted its position. I know it will forgive you if you're not exactly bang on the North Star. I tested it and it worked fine, but you got the laser pointer, get it on the North Star, much as you can. So once I'd set up the actual unit and I was ready to go, I wanted to try and repeat a shot that I'd taken in a previous video on the 50 mil Canon 1.8. I'll put a link to the video just here because I could only get about three seconds of an exposure. It was very very bright and this is a very very different way of doing astrophotography than what I'm used to. So the idea was to take a three to four minute exposure of the sky, also to take a four minute exposure of the foreground thus being the mountain. So in the end I had an image of three minutes for the sky and it was absolutely spot on. Top draw looked absolutely phenomenal. Really, really impressed. Three minutes it tracked across that sky with a 50 mil lens. So by the time I'd come to do the foreground, in this case, it would have been the mountain. That's some foreground, the mountain. When I'd come to actually take that though, there was some kind of fire on the horizon and it just looked shocking. I just, it just didn't look clear enough. And this isn't a cop-out, it's just that I just didn't like the image and I just kind of lost it from there. 
So unfortunately I wasn't able to complete my little task there. I will end up doing this image again because it will be a nice image once I've done it. And I'll just put I'll put the image up now and I'll just show you how clear the sky was and then you'll see the actual blur of the mountain going by as it's tracking the sky. So the next image I took was with the Samyang 14mm 2.8. It was a five minute exposure at ISO 100 and I stepped it down to 5.6. I just wanted to see how it would be at five minutes. The image came out really, really good. And I'll show this image at the end. So this image was done in two parts again, exposing for the sky and exposing for the foreground separately. I was able to achieve sharpness in the stars and in the foreground. So what do I think of the build? I think the build is really robust. I think it's a lovely looking unit. And I realized that previous units have had some kind of dial on them. And this has a button configuration. It worked really well. The bore head. Oh. As he smashes his table. So just to go over the ball head that I bought with the unit. Really nice, really nice. Quite a smooth action. And once I tightened it up, it stayed solid. Quite impressive. So the negatives of this unit, none really, none at all. This is for wide field astro landscape photography. And if that's your thing, this is gonna help you massively, massively. So I'm really looking forward to using this unit to get some Milky Way goodness as soon as lockdown is released. Hopefully shortly. So what are the positives? Well. I think it's everything really. This is going to help you achieve long exposures with sharpness that is absolutely superb. I think this will help your white field astro landscape photography immensely. And I think it'll be a valued bit of kit in your bag. And I, and I, I generally don't think it'll come out of my bag. I think it's so small, it'll fit in my bag. It's really easy to carry. It's, all right, it's a pound in weight. A pound in weight, all right. Calm down, but it's going to make a massive difference to your night of photography. Huge, huge. I can, you know, even now with my limited testing of the whole unit with my Canon 5D, it just astounded me. You know, I've never used one before. It was, it was really, really good. I know I'll end up coming back and doing a lot more tests for this tracker. I think this is, it may end up being a little bit of a series to be honest as I go along. So I don't know if you noticed, but my light went off. And then when I put it on, I knocked the dial. So I'm not sure if it's matching the rest of the video. I'm certainly not shooting it all again. So that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. It really does mean a massive amount to me. Please comment below. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. Next Saturday, I'm going to put out my review of the Samyang 14mm 2.8 lens. I'm praying for some clear skies in the week so I can give you some nice crispy images from the house. Jeez, from the house. I will see you next Saturday, next Saturday, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, next Saturday, I will see you there. So subscribe so you don't miss any of my misadventures, I'm sure you really don't want to miss any of those, do you? I, I know you don't. I think this will phenomenally help. Phenomenally. Do 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 do. Phenomenally. Do 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 do. Phenomenally. Do 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 do